Try everyone. Uh, so it's English or Croatian? What do you prefer? English. Okay, cool. So uh, for today's, <coughs> for today's, for today's, for today's uh, activity, uh, there is actually this is a follow-up for yesterday's uh, lecture. So in terms of uh, what can you do with Google Analytics, but this is a focus on Google Analytics 4. So the fourth version is basically the new version. Uh, which means it's an update to what you have already been collecting with the Google Analytics, the old one. And the point is, uh, it's not something that you can opt in or opt out to. It's basically something that it's a given uh, thing that you need to do in the, let's say, next couple of months. Uh, why is it in important? Because uh, this new updated version is going to be the version which is going to collect everything further down the road. So. Uh, any advancements in terms of Google Analytics or Google uh, measurement in any case, th this new version, which is called Google Analytics 4, is going to be the version uh, to do it in. This current Google Analytics, which you have, is not going away in any case, uh, but the point is that, um, let's put it mildly, basically Google is focusing all of their efforts in a completely new way, so you need to follow. So there is no opt-outs or uh, things like that, which can be uh, uh, done, let's say, in some kind of a short term. So then, let's say, just a short uh, intro. My name is Zorin, and I've been working with Google and with Google Analytics for almost a decade now. And it's uh, already too much for me, in a way. So basically, we are trying to find some, some other venues. Uh, <clears throat> but in terms of Google and how we actually work with charters and manage success, manage expectations and everything else. We need to be up to date with the technologies and with everything which is going on with Google as a, let's say, a marketing system. So one of these parts of the system is now extremely in focus, meaning that it's uh, starting to grow at a rapid rate uh, because any kind of advancement in terms of technology is, uh, let's say, generating more and more focus in this kind of a short term. But the point is, what do you get from that, from this, uh, let's say, move? Currently, absolutely nothing. Because the tool itself, this Google Analytics 4 as a tool, is actually not that prepared in terms of production, in terms of reporting, day-to-day uh, -day use, uh, in terms of optimization, and so on. So it's probably going to be a learning curve, and it depends on your previous experience with Google Analytics, how let's say, much time, are you going to need to get to a very comfortable level in terms of, uh, yes, I know where everything is inside the interface. Yes, I know how to generate a specific report. And more importantly, yes, I know how to recreate all of these reports that I previously used. And now I can have all of these reports inside the new version of Google Analytics. Now, that's, that's, that's actually not the point. Uh, even if you did something previously in Google Analytics, uh, there are many more improvements which are coming which you should probably embrace in terms of uh, new features. So that's the first part. Uh, second part, you can start all over again. Yeah, meaning that if you messed up anything before, you can basically just recreate it again and no one's gonna uh, remember anything. And then the third part, which is probably one of the best parts that I find inside uh, this new version is the flexibility that it offers. So most of the things that we were used to were prescribed. Uh, it's basically just uh, putting your analytics, your measurement inside a, a predefined bucket. And then you need to map all of these things inside this, uh, let's say, box. Uh, with the new Google Analytics 4, it's uh, some kind of an open board, blank board, whiteboard, uh, where you can actually sketch what you need for your business. You can name it, you can place it, you can report on it, you can store it however you like, you can access it in many more ways, many more quality ways, and uh, it's basically the future. It's not so new in terms of uh, how data is collected, how it's processed, because fa Facebook did it before in a similar fashion. Uh, then we had uh, Snowplow, which is also something a bit more advanced, but basically does almost the same thing. Uh, but let's face it, this is the Google's move now. So it's probably going to shift a lot of things uh, inside this process. So uh, let's move to the important part, and this is what's actually measured inside. Everything. So everything that's connected with the Internet can be measured in 
side Google Analytics. And that's a nice thing. It's also a difficult thing, uh, especially in the privacy era. Uh, because for each of data point that you collected somewhere, you probably need to have some kind of a consent. So it's not that easy. It needs to be privacy by uh, design, meaning that uh, each collection point needs to be checked, determined, and checked again if we can use it in any reasonable way, meaning if we can report on it, if, if we can process it, if we can analyze it, and afterwards can we send it to any kind of an ad platform and then use it against the end user, basically. So. It's always now going to be a battle of uh, how up-to-date your, your uh, privacy consents are currently and what you can actually do with that. With analytics, uh, analytics actually doesn't care if you gave consent or not. That, that's on you. Uh, it's, it's just a tool. So however you govern the tool, it's going to provide you with the results uh, depending on the consent and everything else. So with uh, the charter business, which is probably I mean, one of the most important things that you can send from the offline world is the conversion itself. Uh, because most of the things that happen in charter business happen offline, the most important part. Uh, once you, let's say, book or uh, want to book something, you probably need to do some kind of a ad advanced payment at least one to two months prior to the uh, booking or, 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 let's say, the vacation start. Uh, and it's always a question uh, how can you get to some kind of a comfortable number between how many leads or how many bookings or intents to book you actually have and the actual number of bookings which happen, meaning the payments trans transactions that you generate it inside a time range. By using only leads in terms of uh, marketing, in terms of conversion tracking and everything else, you can probably be way off depending on which traffic channels you have, depending on which geography do you attack in a way, uh, it can get down to a point that you generate a lot of leads, but the quality of leads themselves are not as good as you would hope them to be. So bringing offline data to the online world, so you have this kind of a, uh, action or, or uh, reaction to the actual con conversion is definitely helpful. If this gap between the uh, number of leads and the number of actually uh, transactions is quite high. So if this gap is uh, let's, uh, sorry, wide, then in this case, this offline conversion import should be one of the uh, primary things you would focus on in the near, near term. So accuracy data and everything else is probably something you should focus. Uh, what's changing? So just a question for uh, some of you in the audience, basically, uh, is do you use Google Analytics and what do you use it for? So just a simple set of questions. So Google Analytics, do you use it and what do you use it for? You don't use it. <laughs> if, yeah, okay. I use it to measure our goals. Uh, we like want to want to know where our uh, public uh, guests are coming from. Okay. Uh, uh, how much when when I uh, start some campaign on Facebook, and to see how much uh, guests brought me to, and uh, certain posts or certain um, news, okay, how, cool. how many data we collect and stuff like that. Thank you. Yeah, and you get this information probably for the from the interface, right? So you get to a report, you get some kind of a numbers, and you are used to all of these reports, and it's quite easy to get those numbers now because you, you have probably used it a long time before. Okay. So uh, it's going to be difficult uh, for both parties, meaning people who have uh, prior, uh, prior used Google Analytics, the old version, and for the new and upcoming users because the model has entirely changed. So currently, what's actually happened is that Google Analytics is changing the way it collects data. So there are no more page, view, page views. There are no more transactions. There are no more specific items that you collect on the uh, web page itself. Now, these are all events. Everything is an event. Every interaction which happens on the page itself or uh, in a native application or, or whatever you have, it's always going to be an event. So everything as, is an event. Each event has a specific name, depending on what's it used for, what do we actually track. So an event for a page view is going to be called page view. So it's not that big of a shift, but the naming and uh, what's actually used inside analytics is a bit different, so you need to get used to it. 
There are not going to be any more easy reports, at least for now, in terms of top 10 pages read on the site. These simple reports are currently quite difficult to get. So whatever you are doing currently, just enjoy the old analytics as long as you can and uh, start learning the interface and the data model which is collecting in the near future. I, when I say near, near future, it's probably going to be two, three months. Uh, and you'll get the grasp of what Google Analytics, the, the, new, the new one is. Uh, so the second part, uh, which is quite, quite important to state, is that Google Analytics does not uh, rely, um, I, st I would say totally rely on the fact that a person has to be on the site that you can actually track that. No, that's the old ways, basically, where you have the exact tracking. So you get to a site, uh, something pings Google Analytics servers, and then you are in the, some kind of a table. You're, you are measured, basically. Uh, in the privacy age, nowadays, uh, some of these hits, basically, which go to Google Analytics are basically blocked. So what Google is going to do in the near term as well is they are going to estimate the number of users, estimate the number of uh, conversions which are happening on the site. Why? Because they're blocked. So if you as an advertiser want to have any kind of a decent notion of what's happening on the site, how can we increase, increase anything on the site, they're probably going to have to estimate this, I don't know, a quarter of data which we are missing or even more, especially in terms of if most of the users that come to the site use devices like iOS, uh, Apple, Mac, or whatever, these are, uh, let's say, blocked at a higher rate. Meaning that, uh, let's say, uh, if your audience is, uh, I don't know, generated more with iOS, the quality of data is going to be much, much less than before. Why? Because uh, browsers, devices, and everything else are starting to actively block any kind of communication between the client device and the measurement platform or the ad platform itself. So it's going to be difficult, but it's possible. So just be prepared uh, that uh, once you get this kind of a number, let's say 100,000 users per month, uh, that's not going to actually be that number. It's probably going to be an estimate. And when I say estimate, there are three types of ways how Google Analytics measures a user. So you probably know what a user currently is in Google Analytics. It's basically a cookie string which is found inside the browser and let's say for a person that has three devices and connects to the same site with all of these three devices they are practically three users inside Google Analytics. So there is no way for Google Analytics to know that this is the same same person. There is one and it's a trick it's called the user ID. So if you have any kind of a login system that you can provide it to Google Analytics so you, uh, GA can stitch it back together meaning multiple devices, multiple browsers, can actually show as one user. Uh, with GA4, there is something completely new, and it's called Google Signals. Google Signals is basically a backend for data collection inside the Google, let's say, marketing world, uh, which basically says we will collect your information from multiple sources, and if we can see that you are one person from multiple sites, multiple devices, multiple anything, we will stitch it back for you. So they, they are going to help us basically do this kind of a, a stitching process. Now, uh, does any one of you report on uh, any, uh, let's say, age, gender, uh, or any kind of demographic information inside GA? Any, uh, I mean, male, female, age groups, and so on. Do you use this kind of a number or not? OK. Once you do, you, you can basically do it, but it's only available when you connect it with Google, uh, Google Ads. So it's not available as is. Uh, it, I would say it's more accurate in that way. It's already available if you turn on retargeting as a service, but it can be used in many multiple ways. The point being, with age and gender information, you get about 45%, 50% of popular uh, users that come to the site Google will give you this information for about half of the users which come to the site. Because it doesn't know. It cannot explicitly say who the user is. The same applies to user stitching and basically making a user a single person, single persona. For some of the people, it can tell that. But for some people, it just cannot. There are too many uh, uh, details which it doesn't know or cannot connect. So in this case, it's not going to do that. You will be. Uh, in a situation where you will fall back to this client ID solution. 
So what is Google Analytics for is actually nothing new. It's just a new version of the tool, but it's a bit different. So this is what you need to get used to. So uh, still, some of the things that uh, you need to know is that you need to start tracking as soon as possible. So the first reason is why. Because as soon as you start tracking, you will have the ability to track year over year any kind of trending as soon as possible. So meaning if you start now, you will have to wait for a year to get this year over year kind of a trend. If you have started before, let's say on the, uh, in the start of the year, start of the season, in a way, then you would already have enough data for the next year to be, uh, let's say, production ready. Uh, because without comparison, let's say period over period, year over year, uh, analytics doesn't really uh, shine. It, it has issues on determining how efficient you actually are. Uh, it's still in beta, meaning uh, you cannot actually uh, do any kind of serious production reporting with it, uh, and it could change. Something could drastically change inside, let's say, next six months. So whatever you are doing currently with it, you are basically just learning it. You are testing what the features are, you are testing collection, you are testing whatever it does, and you are learning the interface. So that should actually be your goal inside, let's say, two, three months. Not more than that, because from next year, Q1, uh, most of these things are all already going to be done, finished, probably. So uh, there are three current versions which are, uh, let's say, published online. Uh, so you need to be aware that even if your colleagues work with GA4 and you work with GA4, it could be the situation that you are working in different versions of the same tool. So the interface could look differently. So be careful about it because help and everything else inside Google Analytics is going to be a bit more harder to get. One additional reason why is because uh, in the old Google Analytics, you had this, uh, you had this uh, navigation line which is called uh, custom reports, customization, custom reporting, saved reports, and similar. The new Google Analytics, so the version 4, basically the whole interface is a custom report tool. So you can change the reports, you can change naming, you can change tables, you can change data inside, you can change basically everything inside. But be careful about it, because if you change a lot, <clears throat> then it's quite hard to track what's actually happening. And if you ask any colleague of yours uh, to help out with a specific report, or you want to compare data in some specific reports, you need to make sure that uh, uh, underlying definitions of uh, specific reports are the same. Because data comparison between colleagues, between teams, and everything else is going to be a bit more difficult. So for reporting part, <clears throat> if you want to use this new Google Analytics 4 version, I would suggest just forget about the interface itself and just move on to Data Studio. Anyone uses Data Studio as a tool for reporting? No? OK. So uh, it's much more easier, much more flexible and it can connect to multiple data sources. So it's, it's a big win. So whatever you are doing with reporting, with uh, digital marketing reporting and so on, never do it from uh, uh, Google Analytics itself, meaning uh, you uh, print screen a report or something like that. You can easily recreate everything from Google Analytics interface to Data Studio and make it even better. So that's, that's, that's a big win for, for the for the tool itself. One additional uh, thing is when I mentioned you can connect multiple sources, you can push it, probably every data point, meaning a table, which is found on the internet, uh, regardless of the form. It could be a database, it could be a Facebook uh, account, ad account, Bing ad account, uh, Google Ads, anything basically which you can find online. You can uh, even import weather data from, I don't know, a specific location and then join it with Google Analytics or, 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 or with something else. If it helps, I mean, if it, if it makes sense. Tracking, and that's the technical part. So it's always a question when a new technology arises, it's always a question what's the cost of uh, implementation, what's the cost of this kind of a transfer. For Google Analytics 4, it's basically uh, a very low cost uh, effort. Uh, what's the reason for it? Because the underlying uh, method of measuring anything of data collection is basically the same. It's a piece of code which you place on the site, and you, then you have small pieces of code which you send information back to Google. So nothing changed in this actual 
matter. So whatever you are collecting with the old Google Analytics, it can easily be mapped to the new version. Quite easily, basically. If you are uh, any, in any way familiar with the Google Tag, Tag Manager or, or uh, HTML or JavaScript, it could probably be a uh, one-day work, even less, even much less. For, for a simple, simple integration, simple implementation. So it's not that kind of a difficult uh, uh, thing to do. And you should probably start immediately because there is nothing blocking you. There is no hidden fees. There is absolutely no cost uh, tied to this new version. So the ideal setup is, uh, as before, so nothing changed in this uh, way as well, is to use GTM. So Google Tag Manager is basically a helpful tool. It's a utility which uh, helps you push multiple information to multiple endpoints. When I say endpoint, endpoint is actually the endpoint of a data point. So where do you send data, where the data is stored, and this is the place when you can start playing with it, reporting, analyzing, optimizing, uh, and whatever you find interesting. So why GTM? So there are a couple of reasons, because first of all, you can reuse the information that you collect on the web. Meaning if a lead, search, or whatever interaction happens on the site, you can reuse all of this information and send the same information to multiple platforms. So when you send the conversion, you probably send it to all of the platforms, both to Facebook, then to Google Ads, then to Google Analytics, then to any kind of retargeting platform. So, but in, in essence, this is all the same. All the same. And if you have multiple codes which are running on the site, it just doesn't make sense because you need to update them, you need to make sure that it's uh, privacy ready, that it's uh, technically ready, and so on. Inside GTM, then by using templates, templates are basically pre-built tags or uh, uh, libraries uh, which are built exactly for the marketing people so they can easily push information to their platform. So for retargeting purposes, for conversion tracking, this is the way to go. And moreover, now again with the privacy thing, once you have this kind of a tool which uh, can control all of these, uh, let's say, sub-tools or uh, libraries, uh, once you have GTM, you can control it from one single center point. So it's not that you have to affect Facebook in a specific way, Google Ads in a specific way. Both Google Ads and Facebook act basically the same. They collect similar data. They are under the same category of marketing cookies or of basically third party uh, information sharing. So once you apply this kind of a rule set, you can apply it to multiple vendors and then it becomes much easier to uh, play by the book. Uh, I'm not gonna say that you're gonna, I don't know, pay some kind of a penalty if you don't, uh, if you don't uh, uh, support the user consent and everything else inside is, uh, uh, let's say, our region at least, uh, but it's always a danger because someone if asks, uh, what do you collect about me as the end user, you are in obligation to tell them that. And it's going to be quite hard uh, to give them that information if you are not aware how the data is collected and that you actually have control about it. So just do it. It's, it's not that, uh, it's not that uh, tricky to do, but it's definitely helpful long term. Uh, if anyone has native apps, like support apps, meaning mobile apps, uh, iOS, Android, and everything else, this is also supported inside, but it's built on Firebase. So this is basically, uh, for the web tracking to work, you would, have to, uh, uh, you would need to have this JavaScript code on the site, but uh, for the native apps, you would need to have this SDK. So it's software development kit, which is placed inside the app itself. So it's basically the same thing, uh, but as these are different technologies, Firebase is a completely new and quite rich framework if you do anything with native apps. If not, Firebase is not your playground at all. So just to recap some of the events and what are they called, how are they used, so in Universal Analytics, so the universal, uh, universal Analytics is basically the old version of analytics. These were the names. This is what you found in reports. This is what you usually reported on. So page views, which are tied to um, pages, landing pages, and so on and so on. So these are now missing. These are now going to be events, and they will have a specific name. So, but, but it's a quite simple thing to grasp once you see an example. So there are three types of events. So there are the auto events, recommended events, and uh, custom events. 
So auto events are basically events which are collected automatically on the site. You just place the code and everything is auto collected. Page views, scrolls, uh, outbound clicks, uh, site search, uh, video plays, video interactions, and things like that. This is already all auto collected. So no additional implementation is needed. And it helps. I mean, this is not a, a very high-end, serious implementation for, for, for a specific business, but these are the basics for user behavior tracking. And this is what you get out of the box. So that's a good thing to have. Then the second one is basically these recommended events. So the recommended events are uh, like we know what you usually do in retail business. These are the events that you should probably track like a sign-up event for a newsletter, like a purchase event for an uh, actual purchase, like a uh, uh, checkout or events like that, which help you bucket all of these things and basically compare it in a way and help you build reports. Because if you stick to this, uh, let's say, uh, standardized naming, uh, you will probably get more benefit inside reporting because most of the reporting is going to be pre-filled then. If you do all of the, your, your work uh, in a custom way, all of the reports you're probably going to have to build them from scratch, which is just one additional thing you don't want to do uh, once you are migrating to a new, new technology, let's say. And then the custom events, uh, these are basically anything that you want to track, but it's not included in the first two categories. So it's basically anything. So just to give you uh, a notion, Inside Google Analytics, you can, uh, you can collect 500 unique event names. So just a thought, can actually someone get to a site and do 500 unique things? It's probably difficult, and this is only event names. Event names can also be combined with uh, event parameters, which are basically an extension of what an event is. So event is just a name, something happened, and then you have parameters which actually des describe the event which page, uh, page was viewed, uh, which actual button was clicked, uh, which product was purchased, and so on. So the number of, of combinations between event names and then the event, let's say, custom dimensions, which is also called like that, is uh, quite high. So it's always a danger that, that, that you get too complex. So it's hard to find information. Uh, there are probably going to be multiple uh, things that you are going to track, but it are not actually needed. Uh, so these are just the examples of what they are called. So yeah, the auto events, these, these are the uh, standard ones, which are page view, session start, uh, I don't know, first open, this is more for the mobile app world. Then you have the recommended parts, which is purchase, sign up, level up, and um, so it's from the naming, you can actually see what, the, uh, what each of these events are uh, used for. And then the custom part, which is something that you can say on the charter, let's say site on the agency, you can uh, push, I don't know, if you have any kind of a route planner or a map click or anything like that, this is what these custom events are used for. So you can, this is not required, this is completely optional. So if you need it, track it, if don't, you know, just move on. Uh, the auto events and this auto configuration is actually quite, easy to do. Everything is done inside the interface. You don't have to go inside the code and manage, mingle, uh, ask the developers and uh, to help you out. The point is most of these things are now configurable inside the tool itself. So no need, not that much need for coding, but more, uh, more helpful things are found inside the interface itself. Some additional things which are quite helpful are these uh, parameters, properties, or dimensions. They are referred to uh, as all of these three names uh, because the definition changed. Uh, as said, uh, GA4 is still in beta, so things are going to change. Uh, these were first called parameters, then properties, and then dimensions. And now they are probably going to stay with the custom dimension name. So this is just an example of how a page view this is an event, it has a name page view, it has multiple parameters. So page title, page location, page path. It's quite similar to the old Google Analytics, uh, but you have much more flex flexibility in determining uh, what to send and how to send it. Uh, some tracking ideas, with, uh, ideas which were mentioned yesterday uh, that you 
don't want to have a simple implementation of Google Analytics if you have a specific type of uh, business that you represent on a site. Because you will probably miss a lot of information uh, which you need to collect from the user what they perform, which kind of interactions do they do. So some of the ideas, some of the custom dimensions which you would probably need to have on the site itself are these ones. So let's say anyone does some kind of a vote search or availability search on the site. These are some quite simple things to track or quite easy things to use later on. So the first point is, let's say, vote type, checking date, cabin number, uh, or cabin count, or whatever you want to name it, and adults number. So just a couple of, let's say, items which the user has to enter if they want to have any kind of a listing uh, re reported back. <coughs> Sorry. So in that case, uh, the parameter naming is also completely on you. You can have your own naming policy and basically just push all of this information to Google Analytics and then, as I said yesterday, you can use it as an audience idea or a conversion idea or whatever you use it for later on. Meaning that if the bow type is, I don't know, a stale boat, uh, then they Im almost immediately go to this retargeting list which is based on all of the users who have in some point in time searched for a sailboat. Same applies to motorboat or whatever you have in, uh, as an offer. Uh, there are also some of the things that you probably use or do to a specific product or let's say a boat. And this can all be mapped out to charter business as well. So uh, to put it simply, let's, 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 uh, let's use a more easy example. Let's say uh, you want to buy a fridge. Uh, you get to a specific site and you start from the home page. Inside the home page, you have promotions. So this is the first part. So this is the actual thing that you can send to Google Analytics. The promotion is some kind of an internal promotion, a banner, which says we have 25% off of something. If you click on the promotion, you can also send this information back. So if you have any kind of a promotion on the website, uh, you can send this data back to Google Analytics saying, this person saw the promotion, this person clicked on the promotion, and subsequently also could purchase based on this promotion uh, at the end. You can do multiple additional things with a product, but the product itself. A product can be found in the list, so a boat can be found in the list. You can click on it, you can view details about it, and you can start doing the booking process itself. So if you uh, want to do any kind of a checkup of your site, of the quality of your, your site, how the funnel works, and where the biggest gap is, or where, where do you lose most of the customers that come to the site, then basically following this simple procedure or this simple list of events would probably be um, very helpful for you. So this is only used if you want to build this kind of a funnel where you say, uh, I want to report, let's say, on the success of my site, so not the marketing part, not the promotional part, but the success of my site in converting people how do they, uh, what's the step rate, let's say, from the beginning of the experience to the end? And then you see when the biggest gap is, I don't know, 95%, basically from people who view the details of the boat but didn't continue in the process, then this is the part of this, uh, let's say, process where you need to focus on and optimize. Change. So just to sum up the events and basically the basis of GA4, you have an event. In this case, it can be a boat search or, um, I don't know, uh, availability search. Name it what you want. And all of these uh, items uh, around are basically parameters, how you describe this specific event. And this is how you start building your measurement. So this is how rich it can get. So each interaction can be described with multiple attributes, and each of these interactions can help you report, build audience, track conversions, and optimize your efforts. So this is how, how it works uh, in, in real life, let's say. But before you start, uh, this is the opportunity that you can have, uh, meaning you have this, uh, your old Google Analytics implementation, which is probably going to be outdated in two years, three years. It's probably going to just, they're probably just going to turn it off or they're not going to update it at all anymore. So uh, whatever you're focused on is just doing it everything inside GA4. But start smart, meaning that if you see any kind of inefficiencies with your old Google Analytics implementation, 
then you have this extremely great chance to improve it now, basically, because you are starting from scratch. There is no connection between old Google Analytics and the new one. There is no update button. There is no data transfer or whatever. So once you start collecting in GA4, that's basically it. But uh, data transfer from the old Google Analytics is definitely not possible. So we'll, you will have to start from scratch. So that's why uh, starting as early as possible is uh, essential. So what to track? Just three main ideas. So the first one is site search and availability. So once a user gets on a site, enters check-in date, check-out date, number of kids, type of board, and everything else. So this is your primary point of concern. Once the user gets to the site, can they actually find, find what they are looking for? So is the demand uh, there, but demand for a specific product that you have? So the second part is errors. Once you get to a site uh, and the end users receive some kind of an error, either a system error, so um, let's say our system doesn't work, so that's one type of error. Or the second type of error, they start typing something, they, stop, uh, they uh, press submit, but then in this case, the system tells them, uh, no, some of these fields are not uh, in correctly inserted, meaning that the email is not correct, the name is not correct, or the name already exists, or not all of the fields which are required are, are filled in. So these are all the types of errors which you can uh, track on the site just to understand if there are any points on the web, on, on the site, which can uh, help you improve the user experience. Subsequently, the conversion rates and everything else should be improved as well. Subsequently, so. And then the lead as a booking as a macro conversion, which is uh, basically what happens in the end. But once you check the booking and uh, this kind of a lead, just make sure to send as much information as you have about that specific lead. Meaning the same things that you have tracked with, uh, uh, let's say, boat search, the same set of parameters you should send it with the lead itself. Why is that? Because you can also then uh, measure gaps between. So if something is in demand in terms of search, but is not as a transactional, let's say, data available, meaning we have generated a lot of traction about a specific product or a specific date range, but there are no transactions uh, for that specific uh, item we have planned, then we probably have some kind of an issue about it. So this kind of tracking would probably help you um, spot if there is anything going wrong uh, as soon as possible. So this delay between an issue and detecting an issue should be reduced dramatically, especially in digital world and especially if in businesses which suffer from high se uh, seasonal changes. So if there is seasonality uh, and you spot a change but you spot it too late, basically your season is done, your season is over and then, then that's basically, basically it. So for your technical people, or let's say if you want to do this implementation for all of the sites, you actually have to do it. There is no way out. There is no, 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 no easy way out for that. So everyone has to do it, basically, if they want to continue tracking in, in this Google marketing system uh, as a continued effort. So if you want to continue reporting, if you want to continue reporting in the new tool, you just have to do it. Now, the point of how to do it accurately this is probably the easiest way to do it. So just use GTM. You have two lines of defense, let's say, for tracking part. So the first part is Google Analytics, and you will have two versions inside. And there is absolutely no problem of having both these two versions inside. So GA, the old version, can coexist with the GA4 version. And there is absolutely no downside side to it. So you should do it. Uh, all of the other things that you have implemented, like Google Ads or Google Optimize or Facebook and everything else, you can just basically leave it alone. It's, uh, it shouldn't be changed, changed at all. So the point being that the only thing that needs to change is this uh, one just uh, additional uh, part of the graph which is just implementing a new piece of code. So it's just if you start advertising with a new ad network, this is basically the same. Same procedure, so it's not that hard. Uh, there's also this part of GA4 limits, okay? So before you start any kind of implementation, and as mentioned before, just start planning, make sure that you uh, have all the items on the site that you want to track, how you want to track them, and so on. Just make sure to be aware of the limitations, because there are limitations, and especially in terms of event names or similar. So you, 
can't have an event name which is 520 characters. So that just doesn't make sense. In most cases, it's just 100 characters or so. So you're probably going to uh, have to uh, splice uh, strings, splice names, or use parameters, or, or whatever, in order to better describe something that's happening on the site. But learn those, plan, start imp implementing as soon as possible. Do not try to understand the interface right now. Just don't, because it's quite difficult to use. Just use Google Data Studio and report from there. Uh, there is also one more benefit for using Google Data Studio, and that's basically this uh, overview of all dimensions and metrics which is available in the tool itself, which you cannot find in the interface. So if you want to know what you can report on, just go to Google Data Studio, create a report based on GA4 as a data source, and then start learning from there. So this is my honest advice. Okay, that's it for today, and happy implementation. Yeah, thanks. thank you.